Hello, from wherever, whenever you're listening to me, this is Michael Vaughn, and welcome to Fundamentally Speaking. You have arrived at the right place to be encouraged and challenged in the Word of God as you deal with life today. In this podcast, I take the fundamentals found in the Word of God and expound on them in ways you may not have considered so that you can ensure that your foundation stays strong regardless of what you have been called by Father God to do in the earth, meaning whatever you find yourself doing, you'll be all right because Father's got you. I encourage you, if possible, get something to write with, something to write on, and don't forget your Bible. As I launch into our topic for today on Fundamentally Speaking. Well, I am encouraged that you are back that you're back. I, as I, as I stated, uh, before I stated previously that, uh, you know, I was saying when I was uh, talking last time that I, you know, I'm, I do want people to listen. I do want people to tell other folks, but you won't get any compromised gospel here. As far as I understand the word, know the word, I'm gonna preach it and I'm gonna preach what Holy Spirit gives me to say. That is my promise. That's my commitment to you, but more so that's my commitment to my father. That's my commitment to Father God. Because I know that one day I got to stand before him. One day I got to answer for what I have done in this body. And I don't want to be trembling. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you came back. We have been dealing with all this month. We've been dealing with the topic of looking for the rapture. You can even say expecting the rapture. I'm expecting it. I'm expecting it. Jesus is going to crack the sky. And why did did I take up this topic? Well, I took it up because I believe that's what Holy Spirit was giving me. But I was taking it up because when you live a life that is in expectancy, when you're expecting the rapture to come, guess what? It's going to make you think differently. You're not going to hold grudges. Like maybe you used to. You're not going to be straining over a gnat. You're not going to allow relationships to get all messed up over foolish stuff. You're not going to get caught up in the things of the world. My former pastor said, you got, <coughs> excuse me, got to wear this world as a loose garment. Got to wear the loose garment. You got to be willing to be ready to put it down. Don't let anything stop you from heaven. Don't let anything stop you from making the rapture. And so I brought this topic forward just to connect with the urgency and the expectancy I believe Father God has for us as we move through this world, as we move through this earth, as we move through this time, that we mustn't lose sight of the fact that he is soon to come. Jesus is soon to come. And as such, we don't need to second guess Holy Spirit. We don't need to act like uh, we got this all together. We need to always keep ourselves humble. We need to always keep ourselves with a ready posture. We need to always be, be ready to execute upon whatever Holy Spirit gives us. And we need to be willing to let go of the stuff that just is going to mess us up. So now with acknowledging the rapture can take place at any time, any time. You heard me say it twice before. I'll say it again. The rapture could happen while I, oh, Jesus. I just kind of felt that. (laughs) Rapture could happen while I'm talking. While I am talking, the rapture could happen. And you know what? That's okay with me. So with acknowledging, if we can get to the place, if if we as believers, we acknowledge rapture can take place at any time, we need to live our lives like that. We need to live our lives like that. We're not stopping and being of no good. However, we partner with the Holy Spirit for what he's called us for. When I say not stopping, it's like, oh, the rapture's coming. Let me just make sure that I'm saved and sanctified and ready to go. Yes, that's important. Yes, it's, it's, it's very important to make sure that you are ready. But we don't just be looking out for ourselves. Listen, if a person is truly blood washed, if a pl- person is truly filled with Holy Spirit, you will not be able to just go in a corner and do nothing. You won't be able to do it. You're going to have to speak for him. 
John, Jeremiah showed us that he's like, I ain't going to speak for him anymore, but he said it was like fire shut up in my belly. Why? Jeremiah may have had some frustrations. He may have had some, you know, situation that he wasn't too excited about. And he got in his mind, I'm not going to speak for the Lord because he's not fair. But in Jeremiah's belly, he loved God. And because of that, he had an unction. He had an anointing to speak for him. People of God, if you are filled with Holy Spirit, you've got an unction to speak for him and you're not going to hold it in. So I'm not saying that because I know the rapture may happen at any time that I just make sure my shoes are white and I'm not going to ever go out and it, by any means get them dirty listen we have got to interact with the sinner we have got to interact with this world we've got to continue to occupy till jesus comes therefore we have to partner with holy spirit and know what he's calling for whatever he's calling for Let's be about that. Jesus said when they were looking for him in the temple at the age of 12, mama and daddy, De Joseph and Mary had gone a few days journey and they looked around and saw that Jesus wasn't there. And they went back to the temple and found Jesus sitting amongst the uh, leaders, the officials in the temple asking questions. And they said, Mary was like, you know, uh, uh, Jesus, what's up? And Jesus responded and says, don't you know that I've got to be about my father's business? Hallelujah. We have to be about our father's business. Father, what's your business today? Father, what do you want me to do this week? Father, what are you wanting me to get done today? I want to be about my father's business. And I promise you the only way to be about our father's business is to partner with Holy Spirit. So even when I have knowledge of the rapture, the knowledge of the rapture should not freeze me in my tracks and cause me to get in my corner. The knowledge of the rapture should cause me to nestle up against Holy Spirit, hear what he's speaking into my ear, and by faith move forward to accomplish whatever he's telling me to do. Because as many people as I can, I want them to be saved. Looking for the rapture, it keeps us prepared for the return of Christ. I say when we lose sight of the rapture, we lose sight of the fact that eternity is real and there's a real heaven and a real hell. When we lose sight of the fact of the rapture, we lose sight of the fact that eternity is real and there's a real heaven and a real hell. And I've said to people, and people are really going to go there. There's really people going to heaven. I'm one of them. There's going to be really people going to hell. I am not one of them. The rapture, the mindset, the understanding, the living it out, the walking out our salvation. That is important. As we have the knowledge of the rapture. The rapture is coming. The rapture is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. See when we lose. When we lose sight of eternity. That's a bad day. Looking for the rapture. It keeps me prepared for the return of Christ. When I'm. When I'm think about this. Uh, if I'm expecting Jesus. I'm going to be on my best behavior. If I'm expecting Jesus, I want to make sure that when he comes, that I'm going to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. So looking for or expecting the rapture, it keeps us prepared for the return of Christ. I make sure that my garment is clean. I'm going to partner with Holy Spirit. Whatever he say, I'm going to do, regardless if I feel rickety or not, I am going to do what Holy Spirit has said for me to do. Why? Because the rapture keeps me with an expectancy of the return of Christ. It's kind of like an athlete. When we think about the rapture, it's kind of like an athlete that has to stay in tip-top shape in order to be the best they can be at their sport. Sometimes we think that we see, we see professionals on TV and be like, I can do that. I can do that. No worries. Then we get out there and try and be like, ooh, 
Why did they? Why did it look so effortless to them? Because they took time to what practice. They took time to understand the fundamentals of the game. They took time to improve their art, their skill. So what am I saying? Is that this race that we are running is not a sprint, but indeed it's a marathon. Hallelujah. And so when I keep my eyes on the reps, like an athlete that has to stay in tip top shape, I don't know when Jesus is coming. I don't know what the day is. I don't know what the hour is, but I need to keep my spiritual life in tip top shape because the event is coming. It's a poor track runner to know that the Olympics come every four years and you got trials, let's say nine months ahead of the opening day Olympics and you just decide to start practicing two months before uh, the trial. No, 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 no. An athlete who wants to stay in tip-top shape, they're working out even before the event may even be announced. I might say, why is that so exciting and so important? It's because we as the body of Christ is that we've got to stay prepared. We've got to stay sharp because, see, what's going to happen in this world, it's going to get darker. But blessed be God is that you and I armed with the light. Remember, what does the light to do? The light, it overwhelms, it overcomes the darkness. But if you and I don't know what word to you, if we haven't spent time in the word of God, if we haven't spent time in God's face, if we haven't been stopped, if we haven't spent time praying, if we haven't been stopped seeking, if we haven't spent time seeking him. Then we're not going to know how to apply the word. So we got to stay in tip top shape. We got to stay prayed up. We got to stay read up. We got to stay. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Meditated up. <clears throat> not medicate it, meditate it. Meditate on the word. Joshua told, I'm sorry, a uh, God told Joshua in, in first jo Joshua chapter one, verse eight, but this book of the law should not depart of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it day and night. And then thou shalt have good success. And then thou shalt have good success. When? After you meditate on it, then you'll have good success. When I know the rapture is on its way, I got to be like that tip top, that athlete that wants to stay in tip top shape <clears throat> so they can be ready for the event. They can be ready for their sport. They can be ready when they're called upon to execute in their sport. We got to be ready, people of God. This is too important to just pass off. We, we have got to be ready ready when my Jesus comes ready when he cracks the sky ready when he comes back for us bless God bless God thank you for listening today I know that you were encouraged in the word of God and I pray that you'll not just end there with the good word however that you'll ask Holy Spirit on what you need to do in order to apply this word in your life. The power of the word is in his application. And when we partner with Holy Spirit to apply the word, that is how we will be sure to grow. I encourage you to invite others to join you every week for a new episode of Fundamentally Speaking right here or on our other digital outlets. They will be blessed and encouraged as you have been. Until next time. I'm reminding you that God has a good plan for your life.